Hello everybody, this is Steve Grizzetti, your man from Movie Picks and author of the Movie Picks Guide to Adobe Premiere Elements. And here we are in part six of our eight part basic training for Adobe Premiere Elements. And here in part six, we're going to discuss a key principle in editing and creating effects and motion in your videos. And that is something called keyframing. Now keyframing is something you're going to find it in Final Cut Pro, you're going to find it in Premiere Pro, you're going to find it in After Effects, you're going to find it in virtually every video editing program. You're going to find applications for keyframing all over the program for creating pan and zoom motion paths on a photo, you're going to find it for controlling audio levels, for animating your video effects, and for mixing your movie sound. It's really the key to creating higher levels of audio and video effects. And the principle is very simple. All we're going to do is we're going to create two or more settings for a level, a motion, or an effect on our timeline, and the program is going to create the movement or animation between those settings. We saw this briefly when we added a fade in of audio and video back in our transitions tutorial. Now to demonstrate how keyframing works, we're just going to create a simple motion path across this photo by creating two keyframe points that represent the photo's size and position. And the pan and zoom is going to be the animation from keyframe to keyframe. So I'm going to select this picture on the timeline. And I'm going to go over to the effects control button. That's the button that says FX with a pencil on it. Here in effects control, we're going to toggle open the keyframe controller. Now that's over here on the right. Looks like a stopwatch. Click on that and it opens up a keyframe control workspace. To give ourselves more room to work, we're going to just hover and then drag on the seam in between the workspace here, the main workspace and the keyframe controller. And now we've got some room to work. The playhead here corresponds with the playhead on the timeline. Let's just move that timeline a little more so we can see what we're doing. So when I move it to the beginning of the photo, it's at the beginning of the photo on the timeline. When I move it to the end of the photo, it's at the end of the photo on the timeline. Let's create our initial keyframe for our motion path. To do that, I'm going to work with the effect of motion, which I'll toggle open and you see I have options to control position and scale. Let's start by increasing our scale. It's right now at 48%. We'll widen it out a little bit just by hovering over those numbers and dragging. So we'll start with a close up of this woman's face. And I'm going to drag it into position. I could adjust this position just by adjusting these position numbers for horizontal and vertical position. But the easier way to do it is to click on the listing here in the effects control panel for motion. So I'm going to click on that. And now I'll be able to drag right on the program monitor and position her face just much more intuitively. So we've got her face there right in the center of the screen. And now we'll create our initial keyframe points by clicking on the little stopwatches to the left of position and scale. Those are the two effects that we're going to change to create our motion path. Now I'll move the playhead out to just about the end of the clip and we'll change the position and scale settings. So let's bring scale down a little bit. Once again, we'll select motion here on the effects control panel and we'll drag the woman into position. And that's really all there is to it. You notice the two keyframes are created here in the keyframe controller. These are the new settings for position and scale. You notice on the program monitor, we see a little blue line. That is the motion path between position one and position two of our keyframes. Now we can drag the playhead back to the beginning of the clip Press play, and there's our keyframed motion. And that's the basic principle of keyframing. Keep your eyes open for it. You're going to see it everywhere for creating both audio and video animated effects. Like I say, it really is the key to higher power when it comes to creating special effects, transitions, and movement. So learn to create a basic motion path, and everything else is going to make sense to you. Now, in part seven, we're going to add titles to our movie, putting the final touches on our movie before we finally output it in part eight. I hope you join me for those two final sessions as we continue to learn basic training for Adobe Premiere Elements.